Hi everyone, it's John from RFM Calc and today I'm talking about Magento. So Magento, as you probably know already, is one of the most popular e-commerce platforms in the world. It was originally launched in 2008 and then version 2 was released in 2015. Um, it's traditionally associated with slightly larger merchants, I would say, and there's a lot of complexity. Um, it's not the easiest platform to set up, but on the flip side, it's very scalable. There's a lot you can do with it. You can certainly customize it and to your heart's content to deliver what you need. Uh, and because of that, it's remained a very, very popular platform. Uh, in 2018, it was taken over by Adobe, which is why you can see I'm on the Adobe site. And uh, the, the paid version, which was formerly known as Magento Enterprise, um, and then Magento Commerce was rebranded to Adobe Commerce. But there's still very much a free open source version, uh, which is regularly updated for the time being at least, um, which is still used by a lot of a lot of businesses as well, and, and businesses generating hundreds of millions um, in turnover a year. So it's a solid platform. It's a, certainly not the easiest learning curve, not the easiest platform to start with, um, but you can do a lot with it, and consequently, it's still very popular. So today I'm going to talk about how Magento integrates with RFM Calc. So basically how we can export orders as a CSV file uh, from Magento. We're then going to have a deep dive into that CSV file to understand all the fields that are passed through. Uh, and finally, I'm going to show you how to upload that CSV file from Magento into RFM Calc, ready to generate this huge, wonderful range of reports that we can give you. Uh, so to start with, I've just gone to my uh, Magento 2 demos admin here. So this is the uh, admin dashboard, which you'll be familiar with um, if you work with Magento. So we're not on the very latest version here at the time of recording, we're on 2.4.1, which is close enough. Um, so in terms of uh, reporting that you get with Magento as standard, it, it does come with a few reports. Um, so you've got orders and, and, and products and so on. Um, so there's, you know you can get a little bit of information from here. But in terms of those key bits of information you want to know, like lifetime value, average time between orders, you know, doing a cohort analysis of customers, none of that comes with Magento as standard. Um, so how do we export orders? So you might think naturally that if we go to system here and export under data transfer, that this would be the right place to go. So out of the box, uh, Magento does have a number of um, export options here for things like products and customers, but you'll notice that orders is not an option on this screen. Um, so how this part of the system works is it works on a cron job. So if I select um, all my products here, I can then kind of customize which fields I want to export. I can then leave that and Magento will run in the background and, and generate the export for me. Orders, unfortunately, and I'm not sure why, doesn't fall under this export system. However, it is still native to Magento to be able to export orders as a CSV. All we have to do is go to sales orders. And then you'll see here, this is my uh, list of orders and it's just export and export as a CSV. Now, what this does is it doesn't actually um, queue it as a, as a cron job. It does a live. As soon as you click that, it's going to push the export to you. Now, that's fine for smaller stores. What you'll find with larger stores, if you've got millions of order rows, this will, one, take a very long time to generate. And two, um, depending on your server config, it, your server may time out before the file is actually finished generating. So it's not actually a great... Um, exporter. It's really good, obviously, that Magento, and you'd expect this, has a CSV order export built in, and that's great. But actually, it's not very good, is the, is the honest assessment. What you will find um, is that there are other export modules readily available for Magento that you can install instead that will work on a cron job that will handle much larger um, data sets of orders. Um, but for today, I'm going to show you how to work with the native um, Magento functionality. Um, but, you know, assuming you use that. Um, but the steps were still relatively similar um, if you're using a custom module as well, once you've got the file. So once I've downloaded my CSV of orders, let's have a little look what it looks like. So we can see here we've got um, a standard order export from Magento. Um, so I've blanked out some of these fields um because obviously this is real customer data from a live store so i blanked out kind of the name and email fields um but just to run through these different fields and what they mean um so i think the first thing to note 
is that Magento exports orders by default in the order oldest to newest. So different um, e-commerce platforms do this in different ways. Uh, Shopify, for example, will export orders newest to oldest with their native exporter. It doesn't really matter for RFM Calc, but it's worth being aware of it. Um, and then just working through these fields. So first of all, we've got the ID field, which is just the order number. Um, the purchase point is the store view, which the order was placed on. So one key thing um, that Magento has that a lot of different e-commerce platforms don't have is the ability to support multiple stores from one install. Um, so this purchase point field will tell you which store view the order was placed on. Um, so that's really useful. Um, one thing you should note as well, if you only want to look at orders for a certain store view, you can filter that on the Magento order screen uh, before you do the export and Magento will basically um, follow whatever the filters set are when it produces the export. So if you just want to export orders for a particular store view, you can filter that and then do the export with that and then you don't have to kind of manually uh, go through the CSV afterwards. Uh, purchase date is when the order was placed. Um, build to name and ship to name are the names of the customers. So um, some e-commerce platforms have first name and surname separately. Magento doesn't. It just combines them in the CSV. Um, then we have the order total. So we have base and purchased, which is not necessarily the, the most descriptive uh, name if you don't know what those mean. But basically, uh, grand total base is the order total in your base store currency. However, grand total purchased is the order total in the currency of the store view. So you'll remember a couple of seconds ago, I mentioned about having multiple stores. If those stores are running in different currencies, this first column will give you the order total in your base currency, you, you know, your primary currency for your Magento install. Uh, but this column will give you the, uh, the order total in the currency for that particular store view. Um, you then have the status of the order. Uh, so canceled, complete, and so on. Um, you have the billing address and the shipping address. So these are just put all, this is all combined into one field each on, on Magento. Uh, it doesn't split them out into individual parts. Uh, and then you've got a few more fields, shipping information, uh, customer email, which is really important. We'll need that for our uh, RFM Calc report. Uh, the customer group. Um, so by default, um, guest checkout customers, which is what most of them are now on Magento, unless you're forcing people to log in, have this not logged in group, but then you can have other groups as well uh, for logged in customers. Uh, and then you have the subtotal and shipping and handling. So these values here exclude tax. Um, so basically, uh, the subtotal and shipping and handling um, have no tax applied. But when you combine those and add tax, um, you then get your grand total um, over here. Uh, and then you have some other fields. Um, so payment method is fairly standard. Um, and then what you'll find here as well is there's um, different modules installed on Magento can add columns to the order CSV um, as part of that module. So Apeo is a payment gateway in the UK, uh, formerly known as SagePay. So that adds a few fields uh, to the export. And then also Braintree does as well if you're using Braintree. Um, so there is the ability there for modules to kind of modify the CSV slightly by adding additional columns. Um, and that's certainly possible with custom development as well if you wanted to. Um, and that's kind of it really. Um, so it's quite a simple CSV. There's not a massive amount of information in there, but what it does have is all the core information we need at RFM Calc to generate um, those reports and those advanced reports for lifetime value, average time between orders and, and, and things like that. So next, um, I'm going to show you how to set this up in RFM Calc. So firstly, I'm just gonna make a new uh, project for Magento. Um, so the default project currency, again, RFM Calc supports all world currencies. And the site I've exported this uh, demo order CSV from runs in GBP uh, pounds. So I'll leave that as is. Um, for the date column, uh, the default full text interpretation is fine. You'll see um, Magento exports the dates in a very clear kind of um, name of the month format, um, which can be interpreted by our systems, no problem uh, under the default. So that's fine. Uh, as I mentioned, um, orders in Magento are listed oldest to newest on the default CSV export, uh, but the auto detects is fine there. Uh, and then all these columns will come back to uh, for the mapping shortly. Um, but that's it to set up the project. We can then go into our project and schedule a new report. 
So what I'm going to do now is upload um, the raw file. So not my Excel version where I've blanked out a few columns, the original file, but it's the same file that I've just shown in terms of the data. So we click upload there and we'll just hang on a second because it's um, you know it's a reasonably sized file. So what's happening now is obviously it's uploading it to the RFM calc service. It's also doing a few validation checks on the file um, to make sure it's a valid CSV. Okay, so now the CSV is uploaded, we can map the columns. So the order ID column is obviously, if we just go back over here, uh, the ID column that we looked at earlier. So we'll specify that. Uh, the order date column was the purchase date. There's no currency code column in Magento. Order exports are standard, uh, so we can ignore that. Now for the order value, as you remember, I touched on this before, but the safest one to use really is grand total base. Uh, that includes shipping and tax. Obviously, if you want to exclude those, you can use the subtotal column, which is over here. But I'm going to use uh, grand total base for this because I'm quite happy for those to be included. Uh, next is the order status column. So in Magento, um, or at least in the order CSV, that's called status. So you don't have to specify this. It doesn't really affect the report. Um, but what it means is that you can exclude certain statuses from the report. So cancelled, for example, uh, with the American spelling, um, is one of the statuses in Magento for a cancelled order. So if you don't want those orders to feature in the report data, you can just put that there and RFM count will exclude those. You can exclude multiple statuses, uh, just add a comma separated list um, and that will exclude those from the report for you without you manually having to delete them from the CSV first before you upload them. Now for the customer ID column, uh, Magento doesn't export a internal customer ID by default. And you'll see a lot of these customers anyway, a guest customer, so won't have an internal customer ID as such assigned. So what we normally recommend um, for all e-commerce platforms really is to use the customer email um, as the identifier. So I'm gonna select that here. Um, so what that means is the first time that email address is used, uh, RFM Cal will treat that as a new customer. And then every time that customer comes back under the same email address, it, they'll, they'll be treated as a repeat customer and um, based on the ID being the uh, customer email. So you can exclude certain customer IDs as well. Uh, it's similar to statuses, just a comma separated list uh, of IDs or in this case, email addresses uh, that you can use. So for example, if you've got someone placing lots of test orders and so on, uh, rather than manually having to remove those from the CSV, you can exclude those here as well. Customer email column, uh, again, is the same uh, because obviously that is the email. Um, Where's it gone? There it is. Uh, now Magento doesn't have a customer phone column and that's fine. Uh, and again, for the customer first name, we can just use the bill to name. Um, so some e-commerce platforms separate the first name and the last name columns in the export CSV. Magento doesn't, that's fine. All you need to do is set the first name column as the name uh, and ignore the last name column. And if you forget that, there's a little bit of help here just explaining that. If you only have one customer name field, set that as the customer first name column and leave this one blank. Uh, and then finally, there's no customer company column either in the Magento export. And that's because for the delivery address and billing address, it combines them all into one field. So we can ignore that as well. These aren't essential. Uh, all these do is go into the customer lists uh, at various parts of the report and also the customer CSV export, uh, which I'll demonstrate on another video in future, uh, which lists out all your customers and all their uh, data that you can then use for, for uh, targeting and so on. Um, but it's not essential. Um, the email and the name are really the key the key aspects which we've got. And finally, you can specify some custom columns here um, if your account plan supports these. Um, so there's not a huge amount of data really um, that you can report on in addition uh, in the custom column um, section on RFM Calc reports. One obvious one that people like to use is payment method. So if I select that as the first custom column, what this means is that uh, as well as generating all the standard reports for lifetime value, average time between orders, um, customer cohort analysis and things like that, uh, RFM Cal will also generate some additional um, reports based around the payment method. So you'll be able to see um, for the different payment methods, um, the lifetime value based on payment method, the average time between the first and second order, uh, the number of orders placed on average, the total spend, um, things like that uh, for, in, in this example, credit or debit card versus PayPal. And um, so that'll make some nice charts and nice additional reports for you. 
Um, you can, of course, add additional columns to the CSV before you upload it, uh, and that's something I'll talk about again in future videos. Um, so you can add more custom columns uh, for custom data, which you can then use as custom reports, uh, sorry, to generate custom reports on RFM Calc. Uh, but I'll talk about that in a future video. So that's pretty much it. We can then give our report a name. So I'll just go Magento test one. Um, you can add a description if you want, um, if you want that to appear on the first page of the report, but you don't have to. Um, the option here allows you to anonymize customer data. So if you don't want real names and emails to appear in the uh, fields and, and, and tables and so on on the report, you can anonymize those here. That won't affect any of the numeric data uh, or revenue data or customer lifetime value or time between orders. It won't affect any of that data. It just prevents any real names and emails appearing on the report. So you can do that. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I'm going to do is just overwrite the default column mappings uh, for this project. So all that means is next time I upload a CSV to this uh, Test Magento project, all these uh, columns that I've selected on the dropdowns will be pre-populated for me. Or remember the order status exclusion list and customer ID exclusion list as well. And so all that will be pre-saved to save me having to do it again. And then I just save and continue. And that's it. That report is now queued. Uh, in a couple of minutes, uh, that'll generate in the background. I'll get a little email saying that report is generated. And that's pretty much it. Um, so I'll talk in a future video about all the reports that we generate and um, based on this data, because there's a lot uh, and it's probably a bit too much to go through in one video. Uh, but hopefully that's given you a little bit of guidance um, on how this works um, with Magento. So we've spoken about how to export an order CSV uh, from Magento using the default functionality. We've discussed all the column names uh, that Magento gives you in that CSV and a bit of a deep dive into what those column names mean and the difference between the different values. Uh, and then finally, we've been through how to upload that CSV into RFM Calc um, it, to enable you to generate a report. So hopefully that's been useful. Obviously, if you've got any questions, drop us a line. Um, but if not, I'll speak to you soon. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you.